Well, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back to Every Man Has a Story. Uh, today, we were going to uh, be discussing uh, cryptocurrency. And first of all, this is not financial advice for anybody. It's just like uh, an open discussion. Hopefully, Rike is going to be joining me during the broadcast. I'm he was supposed to be on at 9 o'clock. I don't know where he is, but he joins us. Uh, he's done a lot of research, and he can uh, answer a lot of questions about cryptocurrency. Um I remember back when uh, Bitcoin first came out. I don't remember what year it was, but I heard about it on uh, a website or a, a YouTube channel with a guy named Cliff High, really interesting guy. And he had uh, created these spiders that go out on the Internet and kind of sample what people are thinking about. Anyway, he was uh, getting a Bitcoin when it was like $10 a coin. Hold on. I think Rike might be here. Yeah, there he is. Hey, man. Hey, Rike. hey glad you made it. Um, yeah, yeah, we just, just uh, I was just telling, just telling everybody mm -hmm. that um, when I first heard about uh, cryptocurrencies, there was a guy named Cliff High. I'm not if you ever heard of him or not, but uh, he had um, these spiders that he put on the internet, and he would like uh, do stock advice and things like that, like sampling what words and linguistics were being used on the internet. And he was talking about uh, Bitcoin when it was like ten dollars mm -hmm. a coin. And he said, that oh, might be a scam. It might not be a scam. And it was real difficult to buy. And I sure wish I'd gotten involved in it back then. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jeez. Can yeah. you imagine? And, and you know, there's guys that I've read about who uh, sadly tell the story how they had bought it back then. when It was, you know, $100 or so. And, yeah. and then they were like, oh, you know, it kind of flatlined for the longest time. So they stole it. And it's like they calculated what they would have been worth now <laughs> had they yeah. just held on to it a couple. Well, they were given away for free for a while there. Like uh, there was a guy who got so many coins, and I think the deal was um, if you go sit, order me two pizzas and have them sent to my house, I'll give you like ten bitcoins or fifteen bitcoins. And yeah. so uh, they did that, and then he went and spent them all like within a week, you know, just buying little things with them. Like so, yeah, woulda coulda. Well, I, I well, you know, you never know. Uh, just uh, for all of those who have owned XRP for I think, think since last year, just That's recently, me. Got, uh, yeah, they were they were included in the uh, the what is it? I'm trying to think. Uh, not Songbird Solo, the Solo airdrop. And so, with much anticipation, we all waited till January 20th or so for the Solo airdrop to happen. So um, I like XRP anyway, and I've been buying more and more. I just bought some, two more batches this week. And mm -hmm. uh, so I'm waiting for Sol to happen. So it happened. But, you know, number one, you didn't get very much. And and the price dropped from like $1.50 down to like $0.30 cents or something, $0.20. Yeah. Cent. And, and so everybody it was kind of a joke. All the people I know that had XRP, we were like, well, gee, now I can get that toaster I always wanted. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. But, uh, but who knows? Who knows? Maybe solo, you know, five years from now, you know, I'm, I'm hanging on to it. It's free. Oh, I am I'm too. Yeah, I'm, all, I'm hanging on to it also, yeah. Yeah, you never know. You never know. Mm. Yeah, so you've been, how long have you been researching cryptocurrency? You've been interested in it for a long time or is it something you started doing recently? And by the way, hi, Scuff Danny. Hi, uh, Tess. Nice to see you guys. Hmm. Well, um, I first got an interest in investing in general during the, the tech bubble back in 1999. And I did it for a year, completely not knowing anything about investing. But I loved talk radio. And one of the talk radio stations I used to listen to was the Motley Fool. And so I would listen to them and they were like, you know, now back then, you know, they were doing their homework and they were encouraging people, hey, you know, check out this, this, you know, this stock didn't go out on the NLSC. It's called uh, Starbucks. And mm -hmm. they're going to be a coffee shop. And I was like, honestly, I'm listening to it on the radio. And, and I was like, why would I invest in a coffee shop? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And and then they announced, they were also one of the first to announce when uh, Krispy Kreme went. Uh, yeah, uh, I remember Krispy Kreme, yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, and back then. By the way, by the way uh, you're breaking up a lot. Oh, and it's, let me uh, see. Uh, yeah, sure it's, uh, it's kind of real. The voice is all broken up, and it's real her herky jerky. The video. Okay, I'm not sure if that's the signal. I'll try putting on a uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, headphones. See if that helps. Maybe it's the feedback. I don't know. 
Well, it seems like it's because uh, the video is real, um, you know, stop motion. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. That might just be the signal I have right now. Does that help yeah. me with the, the microphone? No, know. it's the same. It's the same. same. It's just same. just a lot of, it's just breaking up like real bad connection. Uh, let me see. Let me check something here really quick. I did have my VPN. No, I turned off my VPN. And I've got a solid signal. Uh, I don't know. We might be stuck with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, am I okay? Can you hear me okay? Oh, I can hear you really clear. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, so, so anyway, yeah. Um, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, as far as when I first got interested in, in investing, it was back then. And, uh, you know, I learned a lot, made a lot of the classic mistakes, you know, some of them painful lessons. Mm. Um, so then I just took the money and, you know, bought my first house. Then that house doubled in more than doubled in value within a year. You know, mm. so that was that was my start to having, you know, extra money. Uh, I ended up getting three more properties from that. But then I, I took a hiatus, busy with raising a family and then later getting divorced and, you know, so... So from it wasn't until 2017 that I got back into it and I'd heard about the only coin I knew about was crypto uh, Bitcoin. So, mm. so I went ahead and uh, you know bought some in October of 2017. And same thing, I I was familiar with investing but not with crypto and I hadn't learned any technical analysis, nothing. And and I made the classic mistake, you know, I I was making huge gains all the way through December and I didn't understand market cycles. So I lost about 35 percent of the, the realized gains that I had gotten, but I still came out OK. But mm. had I known better, I would have you know timed it different. So that was in 2017 that I started with crypto. So then in 2000, end of 2020, same thing, right about December of 2020, B and I were finishing up our first year doing the whole COVID thing. And, uh, you know, and I was kind of looking for a new project to be self busy with. And then I started thinking, well, I got some money set aside, you know, that I normally had for my medical stuff. Mm. And uh, I thought, well, you know, I, I know I'm going to have more money coming later, so maybe I should take this money and put it into crypto. But be, but this time, I thought to myself, I'm not putting a dime into anything until I do my homework. So I spent all of December 2020 uh, just reading voraciously through any website I could find, checking up on the news, finding what the good vloggers there were out there. Um and I didn't invest anything till like the first week of January. And even then, I was still learning a lot. I mean, it wasn't till like maybe March that I had a pretty good handle on technical analysis. And so I started with XRP, and then I started expanding and going into Solana, which ended up being a really good decision back then. Uh, made a ton of money off of Solana. And uh, learned about staking, um, you know, and other DeFi projects throughout the year. So really the bulk of it has been through 2021. You know, that's, mm. that's, this is when I like really like started going, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I'm going to hammer down on this and, and just make it like my job, you know? Mm. And, uh, and so now I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy with it. Oh, do you start? <laughs> Did you back out or let me see? I think you froze. Uh, let's see. He was moving around his camera, so I think he might have uh, disconnected there. So we'll let him mess with his thing there till uh, till that fixes. But um, anyway, so we'll just kind of vamp here for a bit till he uh, gets back online. Oh, there he yeah, is. Yeah, I'm back. Okay, yeah. there you go. I just tried, I've got <laughs> I've got three internet, so I thought I'd try a different one, see if it was trouble was on my end. Oh no, no. Yeah, I apologize. I don't know what it is. Uh, I just did my live stream the other day from this exact location, and yeah. everything went good. So I don't know. I don't know what it is. I had the same thing happen to me. Like it'll be perfect, and the next day do everything exactly the same, and there's a problem. So oh well. Yeah. yeah. So um, um, yeah. So yeah. pretty much 2021 was the real bulk of when I just started hammering into crypto, and mm. uh, so I'm pretty happy with it. Mm. Well. Do you think that um, 
in the future, you know, 20, 30 years in the future, it's ever going to, a type of crypto is going to replace fiat currency. You think fiat currency is going to uh, still be around 30 years now? Because I'd heard somewhere that um, every fiat currency that has ever existed eventually goes down to zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it happened with the Roman Empire, happened uh, all throughout history. Um, as far as 30 years, I, I would say that more like 10 years, mm. you know, uh, and, and what will happen is between now and the 10 years, it's going to be a hybrid. You know, a lot of people think that XRP is going to be like new currency or that Bitcoin is going to be the new currency. Mm -hmm. It comes down to definitions. Bitcoin is, a, is going to be, and it already is, a good store of value. Okay, it's a place to store your money and still have a pretty good, you know, chance against uh, hedging against inflation. So now XRP is what's called like an on-demand liquidity. It it's not it's its job is not to replace cash. Its job is to act as a medium between different currencies. So mm. there are literally tens of trillions of dollars that are locked up in limbo at any given day because they're moving from dollars to euros to pesos to yen to yuan. And because the, we've been using the SWIFT system, which has been around since like the 70s. And it takes right. anywhere, you, you guys know, you know, you, you send a big chunk of money, it takes three to five days for it to, to move. And, right. um, and that's through the SWIFT system. Now, when you send money through Palawan, yeah, she can pick it up literally two minutes later. Um, but there, many of those are now either being done through XRP or they're being done kind of like, uh, kind of like uh, on a reserve system. It's like in good faith, yeah, they're going to give her that money, but they're really waiting three to five days, the exchange, for your money to get to them. And that's where that limbo thing is happening. And, of course, they charge you for that because they're taking a risk, you know, that you're not going to come through on your end of the payment. Well, that SWIFT system is so outdated, and XRP, by comparison, can move that money through on-demand liquidity as it is an intermediate. It can move that money in under three seconds, and instead of charging a large fee, you know, say you move – Fifteen thousand dollars to somebody on in China or Africa or Philippines, whatever. Um, the fee for for moving it is like point zero 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 one one percent of one penny. Mm. You know, so um, it's no competition. So so to answer your question, uh, cryptocurrency is not so much going to become a replacement for cash in the next five to 10 years, it's going to act more as a medium to move cash quickly. And mm. we'll still have physical cash. Um, now, many countries, other than the United States, the United States is actually lagging. Most, many other countries are already developing their own uh, USDC, you know, their own, or not USDC, but their own um, uh, national coin. So the United States is actually kind of lagging on that. They're, they're talking about, I think it's the U, what is it, the UC, UCDF, the federal, you know, like, like representation yeah. of the dollar. Yeah, um, Facebook is doing it too, I think. They're going to have their, have their yeah, own coin Facebook, as well. Private, yeah, Facebook, Now those, when Facebook does it, or... Or Amazon. I'm surprised Amazon or, hasn't done it. Or yeah, Amazon or J.P. Morgan. When they do it, that's more of what's called like a walled garden. You know, it's a currency within Amazon. It's a currency within Facebook. When you're talking about a USDC that's for a nation like the United States, France, you know, whatever, you're talking about them edging towards a digital currency. So, so I believe that this transition is going to happen over the next five to ten years, max. Mm. Wow. For sales, like think about think about it. Back in the late seventies, you know, you go to the grocery store and you wrote a check. Yeah. Yeah, and you, then know, you could float the check if you knew you were you were in a, you knew your 
you know, getting paid on Friday, you could write a check on Wednesday and float it. Yeah. And, you know, kind of give yourself an advance, but can't do that anymore because they've got that system where they feed the check right into the machine that can tell oh, exactly. Yeah. Treat, they treat it like a debit card. Yeah. 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 So we, we, we transitioned from tax to debit cards and, you know, we already had credit cards. But I had somebody asking me the other day, you know, oh, does the Philippines take cashier's checks? Man, the days of, you know, what was that guy, Richard Malden, you know, talking about, you know, don't leave home without it, cashiers, travelers checks, American Express, I think it was. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's such an outdated, I mean, most, you know, you go into a restaurant in the Philippines with a cashier's check, they're just not going to know what you're talking about, you know. It's yeah, so traveler's outdated. checks, you know, do they even exist anymore, traveler's checks? Well, this guy was asking me about whether they took them there in the Philippines, I guess. I, I know money orders are still around, <laughs> yeah. you know, but uh, so to answer your question, um, I believe that physical fiat cash is going to become a thing of the past within the next five to 10 years. And, and so the question comes up, uh, I've been wanting to actually talk about this for a while. The question comes up, well, what about at the street level? What about the, the barangay in the Philippines where the, the wet market and you got somebody who just wants to go down the street and buy some eggs, a couple of fish, and a few bits of cabbage. You know, how does this all work out? Well, thanks to the fact that now, pretty much around the globe, even in the smallest barangay of the Philippines, somebody in the family has a smartphone. Now, yeah. what's happening is um, cryptocurrency the whole DeFi, decentralized finance movement, is going to allow people for the first time to be their own bank. See, up until now, you had to put your money into, well, let's just say Philippines, you know, BDO or, you know, Metro Bank or China Bank. You had to put it in a bank. You know, same thing here. You got to put it Wells Fargo, whatever. Right. But now with cryptocurrency, anybody right now, can go to coins.ph, which is there in the Philippines, and set up an account on their phone. And now, this is going to be really simple to explain. Now, their bank is on the phone. And it doesn't have to be with just coins.ph. It could be with a, a private wallet. It could be with a, an exchange. It could be anywhere. But you can take digital currency. And this is going to, be, I believe, become the new norm. Uh, and it's a good thing. You can, a person who is just out in the barangay, you know, maybe they only got 800 pesos to their name, but instead of having it in their pocket, they're going to have it on their bank in the phone. And this is what's called banking the unbanked. See, one of the, one of the, the things that, that gets poor people like in say the Philippines or anywhere else, India, Africa, whatever, what keeps the poor staying poor is that they're unbanked many of them they don't right. have the id or they don't have the internet connection to interact with their bank they don't maybe many are illiterate they don't know how to understand an atm machine so what they do is like the 1940s they you know many filipinos the money they have is in their house somebody's at home all the time nobody ever leaves that house no. alone because their money is there now, how do you accrue wealth when you've got a, a mayonnaise jar, you know, or whatever that holds your entire life savings in, hidden in the house? You know, as soon well, you as know, you yeah, it's, above, like, it's like it's like Jen, Jen's brother got a job and they paid him online somehow. I forget how it was. And he had no way to get his money. We had to mm -hmm. uh, Jen had to have it sent to her bank so she could withdraw it and give it to him. But he didn't know how to get his money. Like he thought he was going to get paid in cash at the right. end of two weeks and said they did it online and he didn't know what to do. And I right. think there's a lot of people that are in that situation. Like you must, you must have a cell phone now. You must, mm -hmm. if you don't have a cell phone, yeah. you can't have a job. Right. So the good transition happening here is that what's going to happen is the, the poor, the unbanked are going to become their own bank. They're going to have their mm -hmm. own bank on their phone, not a phone access to a bank you know, which is centralized, right. like BDO, but their own actual digital wallet. Now, here's here's the easiest way to understand it. Every Filipino knows how to receive load 
and and get a yeah. promo with load banking will be the same thing it's mm. just going to be an app and they can use the term load but really it's cash like your 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 example he gets paid into his wallet his digital wallet now he goes down to the barangay you know uh wet market to buy some chicken or whatever well, that vendor there is doing the same thing. They've got a digital wallet of their own. So when she says, okay, uh, total here, weighed it out, comes to 237 pesos. Well, she just taps it out on her phone. It creates a barcode. He puts up his camera, scans her barcode, approves the transfer and it'll move that 237 pesos from his phone into her phone just like load and that's something so if you lose but if, so if you lose your phone though you lose your bank right no because then because he uh when you set up a wallet you get a set of uh like a passphrase it's a set of words that only you know so you mm -hmm. save it at a very safe place so let's say you drop your phone in the toilet or some guy snatches it away or whatever. Of course, you should have a, a screen lock on your phone. Um, mm. You simply go get another phone. You download the app and, and that paper or whatever you had hidden away with your passphrase, you type in the passphrase and now it knows it's you. And now you have access to your money again mm. and you can change the password so the other person can't get into it. So so with these QR codes, anybody, I mean, even some guy selling balut walking down the street can, can can get paid and pay others just and it's it's just like phone load. It's no yeah. no more complicated than that. And, and you know, now what, getting what, back to well, I just want to say one more thing. Yeah, go getting on. back to, to the how this is gonna help combat poverty. The way it is now, like I said, if they've got their money hidden under the mattress or whatever, then they're only going to save so much money because it's a risk to have too much money saved up. So what do they do? They spend it, you know. But now that they can have their money set aside on the phone in this app on the, the blockchain, now they can start saving up higher and higher balances and not worry that somebody's going to steal it. So anyways, thanks for the super sticker, John. I appreciate it. Um, I heard that in China, they pretty much already got this set up where um, people are, are using their phones to buy everything over there. That it's very common, very set up, very efficient system. I'm not sure what it's called, but they're doing something like that. Yeah, Alibaba's uh, made a lot of that really uh, easy to use and popular. There's, there's several different wallets, but uh, a lot of people use WhatsApp in order to move money around and, and uh, Oh, really? You know, I didn't know you do that with WhatsApp. Their, well, the WhatsApp <clears> is like, I think you, it's kind of like when you log into another site with your Facebook, you yeah. use the WhatsApp to log into your, your, your wallet. So it's not so much WhatsApp is doing it. It's kind of like you use that to log in. Um, but now here's the difference is China is they recently just banned Bitcoin and, you know, kicked out all the Bitcoin miners, many of which came to Texas. Um, now, China is, again, very isolationist mentality. They are creating and they have created the US, their own um, digital yuan. Now, they want everybody in China to use it. Now, here's the difference. The digital yuan in China is centralized. The government mm. can get their sticky little fingers in there and monitor what anybody has been spending their money on, who they, they give it to. They can probably shut you down they if they want to, too, huh? If you're not a good yeah, citizen, they can shut you down. Yeah. Exactly. Huh. Now, that's a centralized system. Every other coin out there right now is decentralized. In other words, mm. there's no one person, there's no group of people that can dig into it and own it and change it and lock people out. It's decentralized. It, it runs through hundreds of thousands, if not tens of thousands of nodes spread across the world. It's a blockchain that's on a constant moving trail. Nobody controls it. So that, that's it's, a it's question a I got for you. For somebody that doesn't understand anything about Bitcoin, like you yeah. would think like there's billions and billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin out there. And it's a very complicated thing to set up. 
but there's no office with like Bitcoin employees and there's no president of Bitcoin and there's no board for Bitcoin. I mean, how is it running itself? There's got to be somebody making decisions about what to do with it. It's just how does it run itself? Well, Bitcoin and every other cryptocurrency, the best way you can explain it is it's a computer program. It's a computer program that is not quite, I wouldn't call it artificial intelligence. It's more like an if then sort of program. If this happens, then you do this. And so this program, once it's completed, like for instance, Ripple created the XRP coin and then you know a ledger for it and a blockchain and all that. Now, the, the program uh, works off of what's called smart contracts. And this is why you have a blockchain, is the blockchain is like a, a, an accountant's ledger. It keeps track of every transaction and it's mm -hmm. constantly being updated. You know, every chunk, every block, there, I forget how many transactions it is, it completes one block and then that block is added to the next block, the next block, kind of like a long mm -hmm. snake. And that right. copy of that blockchain, it, it wanders and roams through nodes uh, again, computer hardware, so that if if one node gets destroyed by a fire, there's 10,000 other ones out there. It's, it's about as hard to destroy as the Internet. Hmm. So so now so even though there will be one entity that does create the programming, once it's made live, once it's set into the wild, um, the people who created it, the reason they're creating it and hoping it gets adopted is because. They're going to say from the beginning, there's this many coins available, and that is finite, and that's what gives, right. it, gives it its value. Now, with Bitcoin, it's, I forget how many, it's like so many million or whatever. Um, with Shiba Inu, it's like so many quadrillion, you know, so, of course, has less value. Yeah. Um, well, isn't, a, isn't that one of the criticisms of XRP that they made too many coins? I've heard that. No, no, no. In no. fact, XRP uh, wrote into the, the programming that every month uh, a big chunk of XRP coin goes back into escrow. And then it, every okay. month it gets released from escrow and every month they stick it back in escrow. And, and the reason they did this was to maintain the scarcity. If they wanted, if they needed more XRP in the future because the entire world is now wanting to use it, well, then they could let it come out of escrow and, and let a portion of it stay out of escrow. Mm. In other words, they always there a, have this. Hmm? Well, isn't there? A, there's another coin. I can't remember the name of it. It was like down to like a penny a coin, and there's like trillions of them, and people were they're burning the coins to increase the value. I don't know how you burn the yeah. coins, but they were trying. They were doing that. Um, before we go into that, though, can you take a look at this comment right here from Roger? He's talking sure. about um, how much electricity it takes for Bitcoin. He's saying that if you buy a cup of coffee, it's going to cost $100 in electricity. Is that true? <laughs> I don't know that it works out to $100, but one of the – there's different types of coins. And yeah. Bitcoin is a what's called a, um, a proof-of-work coin. Now, XRP mm -hmm. is a proof of stake coin. The difference okay. is that many understand this already, that with Bitcoin, a, a coin is created when a Bitcoin miner, let's say, you know, a guy named Bob buys a computer, dedicates it to uh, processing Bitcoin mathematical you know, transactions. And, and what he gets for his trouble is a fraction of a Bitcoin. So he's doing this to earn money by, by right. earning Bitcoin, okay? But the problem is, in order for him to run these high-speed mathematical equations that, that confirm different transactions between people buying and spending with Bitcoin, he needs a high-speed gaming card, you know, that's usually mm -hmm. used for, for gaming, you know, that can handle real fast computations. Usually they use it for, gra for graphics and sound or whatever, and, and, you know, the uh, artificial environment and all that, kind of like Counter-Strike mm -hmm. or, you know, I'm, I'm pretty old on this stuff. I mean, Counter-Strike was the big game back then. Anyways, so he's got to use a high-speed graphics card, maybe even two or three of them. But that, that generates a lot of heat. 
So not only is he sucking up a lot of electricity, he's got to use more electricity to cool the thing down so that it'll it won't overheat. So yeah, to generate Bitcoin requires a massive amount of electricity. And that's become a huge issue where nations have said, well, I don't know if we really want Bitcoin mining in our country because it's going to require, shoot, it's going to add 20% of the usage to our country just for electricity. But, well, but could, could that could that be the could that be the Achilles heel though of Bitcoin that this costs so much yeah. to mine it and eventually it gets shut down or whatever and yeah, uh, or maybe it, they, they stop written. mining altogether they outlaw mining and then that uh, it just stops where it is like how many coins are out there? Well, it'll it's not going to ever be stopped completely. Um, what's going to happen is already because countries are are bringing up the ecological impact. What's happening is Bitcoin miners are now going to where there's a zero carbon footprint, where they're they're moving to areas that have waterfalls or they have geothermal production of electricity. See, because now you're generating like the Philippines. We've we've got that here in the Philippines. But yeah. still but still our electricity is very expensive here. Oh even yeah. Even though it's well, geothermal, other... which I've never I never understood that. I know that that's that's a matter of really a network that is not built to scale for the number of people in the Philippines, you know, mm. but but as far as ecological impact and, you know, is uh, Bitcoin mining has now figured out we need to go to areas of the world where we can we can use electricity that's cleanly either through nuclear, water, wind, geothermal, you know, like get, Iceland, get it. Iceland seems like that'd be a good place. It's yeah. cold there. Yeah, just open the windows and you know your your equipment stays cool. <laughs> I heard they're I heard so, they're also um, I heard they've also bought up like uh, closed power plants, like old coal plants, and they're opening them back yeah. up again. Mm -hmm. So now here's the thing with with uh, getting back to the question about the cup of coffee. Um, yes, Bitcoin costs a lot to create because it's what's called a proof of work. It doesn't exist until somebody mines it. Now, this is, again, where XRP came along later in the game and said, that's not a good model. Let's do what's called proof of stake, where all the coins were minted at the very day one, all of them. Mm. There is no requirement for some miner to go out there and create XRP coins. They're already created. Instead, its value is based partly on the scarcity, but also the money that, that people like you and I Mm. purchase XRP. You know, right. there's a value there. So the the when somebody says, why does this have value? It's because there's real money behind it, as opposed to Bitcoin. Well, this has value, yes, because there's money behind it, but also because somebody did some work to create mm. it, you know, because all work is basically a transfer of energy. You know, you go to work, right. you move around, you do stuff, you produce you get paid. So, um, so yeah, as far as Bitcoin, this is the thing that I think is going to bite El Salvador in the butt is that they went ahead and made it the national currency. Bitcoin was not, again, remember co crypto coins are a computer program. It was not programmed to be bounced back and forth hundreds of thousands of times a day you know, for a cup of coffee here and a movie ticket right. there. That's not what it was created for. It was created mm. for one transaction, maybe every month, you know, per user, you know, as a store of value, like a bank account, more like a savings account, you know, right. dump it in there and leave it there for half a year or a year. That's what Bitcoin was created to do. And if you so, did that, you'd, you had made a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, now, what is the solution and who do I, I believe that Bitcoin's predominance is going to end at some point. They're going to fall yeah. down lower in the cryptocurrency dominance market of the market. And I believe, this is just my prediction, knowing what I know about various coins out there. I believe XLM, not XRP, but XLM, which was developed by many of the, the same guys that developed XRP. Uh, XRP Re provides money liquidity between banks. Mm -hmm. XLM provides monetary liquidity 
business to business. So it moves money from the consumer and Walmart or JCPenney or the movie theater, the restaurant, business to business, you know. So mm -hmm. I believe in the eventually XLM stands a very good chance of shoving Bitcoin to the side where they belong as a. How much is XLM? How's that sound for now? What's the coin going for right now? Approximately. Uh, let me take a look. I got it. Uh, I've always got my stuff here on. Uh, okay, let me take a look. XLM is currently going for twenty-four cents a, a coin. Twenty-four oh, cents. Wow. XLM. Yeah. Now it's previous. XLM. Yeah, it's previous all-time high. Yeah, and it's it it's on sale uh, because its previous all-time high back in May last year was seventy-two cents. So the whole okay. market has been sliding down. So this is like blue light special. If you want to get some, it's it's a good price right now. Now, what what about these coins that are there? I can't remember the name, but they're guaranteed. Like it's a dollar uh, invested. It's a dollar oh, yeah. coin is worth a dollar. But they're saying that they did some investigation, though, and they're finding out that even though they were supposed to have like $100 million on deposit, they had a fraction of that. They were lying about how much money they had on deposit. And there was a big scandal about that. You know anything about that? I'm not can't remember yeah, the yeah. coins were. Yeah. Now those type, like we said, there's there's uh, uh, the proof of work coin, which is like Bitcoin. There's the proof of stake coin, like XRP. There's meme coins, which is like Doge and uh, Shiba Inu. They're basically popularity coins. They're they're you know people call them crap coins. <laughs> and then you've got stable coins. Now, yeah, that's what it was. Stable coins. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's the one you're talking about. And right. that one, the principle of the idea there is you're buying the coin like to park your money. So right. one dollar in coin is worth one dollar, you know, and right. if it, euros, it's one coin is worth one euro. One yen is worth, you know, so. So when you put like I just dumped a, a chunk of money into um, USDC, um, and I'll get into this in a second. I trust USDC Circle because mm -hmm. they have been audited and they have been found to handle their reserves properly. Now the one you're you heard about is USDT, which is Tether. Mm -hmm. Now Tether's right. the one that was telling everybody on their, in fact, they have two versions of their websites. And if you go to the Wayback Machine, you can look at the old version, compare it to the new version. They originally were telling people, yeah, your $1 is worth $1. We're going to keep that in reserve. Well, in little fine print, they, they kind of sort of mentioned that a fraction would be put into other assets. Well, now they've changed their website because they came under investigation because they have a lot of ties with China through the Evergrande uh, real estate, um, you know, uh, what do you call it, index. Now, mm -hmm. Evergrande is imploding, it, it, huge, yeah. and to the Heard point that. where China was thinking of bailing them out, kind of like the Lehman problem we had, you know, back, I think, in the 80s. Uh, and so, but anyways, that kind of got smoothed out. But... The Evergrande housing market in China, it is just caving in anyway. It's losing a ton of money. And guess who put a chunk of the money into Evergrande? USD Tether. That's one oh. problem. The other problem is that they have been caught creating coins out of thin air. Same thing that the Federal Reserve does. Mm. So really, that does what? creates inflation within the coin it causes the coin to lose value so now people are really sweating it to me anybody with any brains would not put their money in usd tether people still do but it's a house of cards that i'm guaranteeing you at some point it's going to get investigated and fall apart and what happens when you have a, a bank rush first ones in line get their money the rest of them they lose out so so that's a stable coin but USD Tether is the bad boy catastrophic example of that. You know, that's why I put my money just today, like not even four hours ago, I put a chunk of money into USDC, which is circle. That's a stable mm -hmm. coin. 
you know, the money I put in is matched one. And the reason I did that is because the exchanges have limits, you know, like uphold, you can only buy like 2,500 a day or so. Um, and again, it depends if it's a bank, a credit card purchase, a debit card purchase yeah. or an ACH bank transfer. Uh, now Coinbase, they will let you move up to a hundred thousand a day if your bank limit allows for that. But here's the thing. If you've got huge chunks of money that you want, let's say you're waiting for the price on a coin to drop to a certain price and you want to buy, you want to buy a mm -hmm. hundred thousand of that. You're like convinced, but you won't buy it till it drops to that price. Well, the day it drops to that price, well, okay, you can only buy 10,000 today. You got to wait another 24 hours to buy another 10,000. Mm. By the time you spend your 50, 80, whatever thousand dollars, the price has gone up again. So right. what do you do? You ahead of time, you plan, you put your money into the stable coin. Now, when the price goes down, there is no limit. You can take the whole wad and just swap it. Just tell it. Yeah, it's going from coin to coin. I get it. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And now, you know, five minutes, your trade is done and you go have a cup of coffee. <laughs> now, do you think that, um, you know, Warren Buffett is a big anti-coin guy and thinks that, you know, it's it's all a scam. It's all a Ponzi scheme. Um, do you think that it, it could be we're kind of like in the same place we were back in the 90s when the dot-com crash happened where all of a sudden there's all these dot-com stocks out there and, People were putting all their money into them, and a bunch of these like just went away, and people lost hundreds of millions of dollars. But some of them were golden, like you know, you had Apple out there, you had Microsoft out there, you had a lot of the, the really great companies that if you held your stock, you'd do really well in. Do you think that there's so many coins, there's thousands of coins out there now? There's got to be most of them, got to be worthless or next to worthless, are going to go away, and so you think it's kind of you really have to know what you're doing before you go out there and start buying stuff because, you know, there's so many of them that are if, like anybody can create it. Like you and I could create a, a coin, couldn't we? Is it oh, yeah. just anybody's, yeah. you know, I don't know how you would do that, but um, there was a guy I interviewed not too long ago that's over in Japan and he has a company and that's what they do. They create cryptocurrency for people that want to raise money to start a business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's um, it's definitely a whole new uh, area of finance similar to the dot com thing. Um, a couple of things. Um, one is that back in the dot com era, and again, I was very heavy into that because it was happening as I was investing. Um, I saw so many companies. You didn't know which one was going to be the next Amazon or or Roku. I actually held Roku. I wish I would have kept it. Uh, another one was. Um, Oh, guy, what's the one? They now create Cisco. I, yeah. I was in Cisco when they first. Oh, started. everybody was buying Cisco back then. I remember everybody talking yeah. about that. Yeah. I got impatient. And like I said, I ended up buying a house. If I would have held on to that Cisco, geez, Louise. Um, but you didn't know back then which ones were going to be the home runs. And so now skip forward to 2005. Geez, probably 70, 80 percent of those those dot com startups. They fizzled. They disappeared. They're out of business, bankrupt, yeah. you know. And right now, there's I, I, there's got to be at least 20,000 coins out there. Now, mm. what I believe is we're going to see the same thing. And it has nothing to do with Ponzi or disingenuity and nothing. It just simply has to do with, you know, some teams really thought their project out. You know, just like Bezos really thought out Amazon. And, and Starbucks really figured out their marketing and their niche. So uh, what's going to happen with these coins, you skip forward five years from now, 70, 80% are either going to go bankrupt because they don't have a clue what they're doing and they're going to eventually do a rug pull. They're just going to take the money and run and leave everybody mm -hmm. stranded. Um, or what's going to happen is definitely, and I'm all for this, Regulation is going to become more specific to crypto. That's a big, huge thing right now. And uh, it still needs to be developed properly and all that. Just like the SEC governs uh, stocks, uh, I believe they have no business touching crypto. We should have a separate entity for that. But we do need regulation. And when regulation happens, well, now that just like having a business license, if you're going to run a restaurant, you got to meet this, 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 this criteria. 
Well, right. when we have proper regulation and coins are told, you need to meet this criteria, have this much in reserve, have this much transparency, this much whatever. A lot of coins are going to throw up their hands and go, well, it's not worth the trouble or we can't do that. And they're going to fall by the wayside. But this is why I invest heavily into ISO approved. I think I believe it's ISO 200022 coins because they have met that criteria. Uh, XLM, Algo, uh, XRP. Um, I, I'm trying to think of all, all five. The, there's five main ones. Um, I can always put a link on your thing later for it. But yeah. these coins, now these coins have met the ISO international requirements. These And, and when you meet that requirement, it's kind of like the good housekeeping seal. Now international banks say you're legit. You're approved. You're a made coin. We'll do business with you. These other clowns, not so much. So, so it's going to happen. A lot of these coins are going to disappear, but the ISO ones, I believe, are going to stay. They're going to survive regulation, and they're going to be preferred by the International Monetary Fund and, and every other bank under them. So that's how it's mm. pretty much going to shake out. Now, I heard that um, some people are actually giving up their citizenship and moving to other countries because they're heavily into crypto and they want to protect themselves from taxation. And one of the countries I heard you can go to is Portugal, where apparently they won't tax your crypto. And uh, that's a, supposed to be a great place to live. I've been there. I've never lived there, but I've heard it's, it's a really great place and I've been there several times. And I just wonder if that's going to have some kind of effect on uh, the crypto market where people say, well, you know, I'm not going to stay in America because I'm going to get taxed on my my profits on crypto, I'm just going to move everything over to, to Portugal or whatever country is very um, lenient on taxation on cryptocurrency or basically leaves it alone. There's a guy who has a, cap yeah. uh, a channel called Nomad Capitalist. You know, go where you're treated best. Yeah, I know that. He's yeah. given up his American citizenship. Yeah. Yeah, so did uh, a very popular um, crypto. And he's one of, I consider like one of the top five respected crypto analysts on on youtube uh kevin cage um he mm. just moved to puerto rico so portugal portugal and puerto rico um same same deal they have a treaty with the u.s well, that's, that's, that's interesting that's interesting puerto rico is part of america you know it's not a, a not a state but it's a territory right, right. and that's it's interesting you can go to another go to another straight at state and not have to pay tax my friend just moved there he's a big uh, yeah. real estate investor you know uh interesting very interesting Oh. Yeah, and that. that well, how about you? Or how about you? What have you thought about that? Have you thought about going? Like you're living, you're in California right now, and yeah. I know your girlfriend's here in the Philippines. But what are your plans for the future? Have you thought about maybe going someplace where they'll leave your crypto alone? I've thought about it because I, I did investigate it, especially when Kevin Cage decided to go there. I followed his videos, and and uh, you know, again, it, it's 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 like anything else. It's like moving island to island in the Philippines. There's pros and cons, you know. Now, the pros are, yes, okay, so now you don't pay on federal taxes, state taxes, or capital gains. That's a great plus. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Now, what, what has happened in the last two to five years, I was, I was watching a documentary on this, is uh, Puerto Rico is not a big place. And a no. lot of crypto millionaires, as they call them, a lot of crypto millionaires are moving there to get the tax break. And they're walking in with wads of cash. They know they got to live there six or months or more out of the year. Plus, there's other things, you know, having a real address and all that. You know, it's not like just, you know, stay at a hostel or something. So, so what's happening is a lot of guys are coming in and plopping down they're like oh i like that property there by the beach you know it's going for whatever 200,000 i'll give you 300,000 for it just let me have it and and so the the market for the real estate is getting priced beyond what the locals can afford it's oh. going all to the rich so so now there's a little bit of negative sentiment from the locals to be understood they can't afford either their first home or their, their preferred home in the preferred parts of the country because it's already been bought up and outpriced, you know? So mm. that's, that's one thing is you may encounter some negative sentiment. Who knows? Um, and again, the, the local economy, what happens to any town when a bunch of high rollers roll in, 
You know, it's like Cebu. When when uh, Boracay got shut down, you know, that that's like two thirds of everybody I saw in Boracay for five days that I was there was was Korean. And so mm. when they shut down Boracay for that whole sewage thing, guess what happened? All these Koreans got off the plane in Cebu and they stayed in Cebu and they started throwing money around all over the place. Now all the girls were expecting, you know, all kinds of money because these Koreans were all. Con so what happens is the cost of living starts going up. So, yeah, you'll save on taxes and all that. But you're also going to be moving into an area that the, the cost of living is going to keep going higher as more of these crypto millionaires keep rolling into town. So that's something to, to keep in mind, you know, with that whole uh, thing. Well, now, well, me, well can it float all boats, though? Can, can it actually get, can some of that trickle down to the local people? Like if, they, if the Philippines decided to not tax cryptocurrencies, would a lot of people come here and maybe that money would help for infrastructure and things like that? Or do you think it would be? Um, a detriment to the people that are already here. Well, it all depends on which way the money flows. Now, in mm. in uh, say, let's just say, because um, there's a big difference again in the amount of geography you're talking about between Portugal and say uh, Puerto Rico, is because there's no tax being paid to the U.S. and there's no tax being paid to uh, Puerto Rico. The real money that's flowing out is going to be, like you said, to the, you know, like the hotels, the restaurants. It is going to boost the local economy, you know, auto sales, um, carpenters to build up, you know, nice additions to the house. Uh, everybody, it, you know, housing industry employees, lawnmower guys, swimming pool guys, construction workers, painters. It, it does it. Money is going to flow into the economy. But when you're talking about true infrastructure, the only way that you're going to see more bridges built and whatever is if they start taxing, you know, the cryptocurrency guys. And, and then they lose their, their one magic bullet to even bring them in. So I see it as building up the local economies, but not so much the national economy. I mean, you know. But what if, if they're taxing them? They're, what if they're taxing them? If they, they change the law where you can own property here, there's talk about that happening, that. Uh, a foreign will be able to actually own a piece of property, you know, 100% without having a Filipino partner if that happens. And then they tax the, the property and they tax the, um, you know, when you buy something, they have a sales tax, for example, something like that, then maybe, you know, that would bring in the money. They could still leave the crypto alone, you know, tax it. As yeah, a, now that, as yeah, that would be a happy medium. See, that would work because it's not one blanket rule that applies to everybody it only applies to those who want to buy property. So you always yeah. can opt out. You can say, well, I'm just going to rent. But if you really want to own your property and you know ahead of time, okay, there's going to be property taxes involved. Well, you're going into it knowingly of what's going on. So that would be right. a happy medium. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens, you know, but uh, I don't know. I'm just going to hang on to my XRP and it's like a lottery ticket for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's I have about 13 coins that I'm spread out on, but <clears throat> definitely the, the lion's share is in XRP, XLM. Um, you know, I, I'm just very big on the ISO coins. Uh of course, yeah. you know, I, I have others because you know, who knows? Maybe those ones will pop at some day too, you know, at some time. Yeah. What will happen? Uh, what will have to happen before like Coinbase will start letting you buy um XRP on there? Like I had to use Uphold which you recommended to mm -hmm. me uh, to buy some mm -hmm. more XRP. Um, what, when do you think they'll change their mind and make it so you can buy Like, Why can Uphold uh, sell XRP and Coinbase won't? Well, um, basically because Uphold has the balls to do it. <laughs> See, what okay. happened was uh, back in December of 2020 is when the SEC, I believe, in fact, it was uh, December 24th, uh, is right before Christmas, the SEC announced that they were going to sue Ripple, not XRP, right. but Ripple is the creator of XRP. So they sued Ripple, and there's a whole big thing there I won't go into, a lot of, um, a lot of uh, impropriety on the SEC's part. But what happened was because they made the charge that Ripple sold XRP in order to uh, bootstrap their company, which is untrue. They already had XRP completed <clears throat> as a project before they even sold one piece of it. 
Um, and that's being hashed out in the court right now. Well, as soon as the you know investors who you have to keep in mind, investors and even ex the owners of exchanges are not always the most sophisticated people. They act like a herd of cows or sheep. I mean, they frighten at the littlest things. And so what right. happened was as soon as SEC put this charge against Ripple, a lot of exchanges said, well, we don't want to be caught selling, you know, because the SEC did a very nasty thing. They insinuated that anybody selling XRP was selling an unsecured security, mm -hmm. an unregistered security. Right. And so all of the and, and that they might get in trouble. So it, nobody forced them to. The exchanges voluntarily, 99% of them said, oh, we don't want to get in trouble with the SEC. We'll wait till this court case is finished. So they all stopped selling XRP, except for Uphold and I believe BitTrue. But even BitTrue stopped, I believe. Mm. So there was only two American. Now we're talking America. No. Only two no. American exchanges were selling XRP. Meanwhile, in the rest of the world, the Japan market, Europe, South Korea, they don't care about the SEC. They're still selling XRP on their exchanges. So it's mm. not like they stopped anything. It was just the paranoid American exchanges. Mm. So that's why uh, Uphold and uh, up until a point, BitTrue, were selling XRP. Uh, in fact, I just got some more XRP last week on, on Uphold. Um, mm. So that's why there's that different. Now, now here's what's going to happen. This SEC case, the general consensus is, you know, now that they've gone through preliminary discovery phase, they went through the, uh, what is it, the uh, expert uh, interview phase. Now it's gone from the magistrate judge, uh, who was, God, who was that, Netburn. Now it's gone over to the primary judge, which is Judge Torres. Um, now it's going to start getting into summary, uh, you know, decisions. So, the calendar looks like this whole thing is going to be ended one way or the other, more than likely by August, maybe oh. sooner. Okay. Mm. Now, when that case ends, no matter how it ends, if if the judge says to XRP, which is, I believe there's like not even a 1% chance this is going to happen. If Judge Torres were to tell XRP, uh, you're a security and what you did selling your XRP violated and you, okay, here, we'll give you a fine, you know, whatever, 10, $100 million, whatever, drop in the bucket. Well, then XRP and Ripple are back in business. And now the, the exchanges will put them back up and they'll start selling it again. Now, what happens when you've only got two pizza stores and now all of a sudden you got 100,000 pizza stores? a whole lot more pizza gets sold and a whole right. lot more XRP is going to get bought literally the hour that they announce this case is settled. So that's um, why I'm buying XRP now. <laughs> do, you, do you ever, do you think that XRP, XRP could ever reach the height of Bitcoin? Uh, I would say that for the next five years, um, I try to stay sober and conservative Mm -hmm. In my hands. Um, I believe that the, and again, you know, I want to preface this, you know, I think we were going to do a crawl, but, you know, I just want to say everything we're talking about here, this is a discussion about. Yeah, crypto. just, just two guys, think. just two guys talking. Uh, all it is. That's all it is. Yeah. Legal advice, tax advice. I'm not here to give any of that. We're just talking. Yeah. Uh, so if anybody's going to invest, I did put a banner in, by the way. It was supposed to be uh, there. I don't see it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I don't see it there. Yeah, I put it in. I guess I did it wrong. Either. I think you have to click on it after you create it. Oh, we well, just have to click okay. on it after after you create it. Anyways, um, so yeah, you know, uh, just so everybody knows, you know, I'm not here to tell anybody what they should buy or shouldn't buy, because uh, again, you know, and tomorrow maybe it's not a good decision. Um, again, prices change all the time. So, um, so with this whole, uh, you know, thing happening with the price change uh, coming up on XRP, just my personal opinion. Again, I'm just giving my personal opinion, and I'm I put my money where my mouth is, big time. Believe me, um, I believe that 
a reasonable price by December of this year will be eight to ten dollars per XRP. Mm -hmm. Now it's currently uh, let's see let me like seventy cents something look. like that, right? It's eighty eight cents right now. Oh wow, it's gone up. Yeah, and because it was just uh, sixty four not even a week ago, um, right. I believe that eight to ten dollars by end of the year is very reasonable very conservative now over the next three years i don't know i could see i could reasonably see xrp maybe at a hundred to 120 dollars per coin which is not much it's not much and yeah, look how look how fast you, ethereum shot up i remember when ethereum was under a hundred dollars a coin what is yeah. it now like three thousand something uh three thousand eight hundred or so yeah. yeah um now here's Here's now now that I've given you a conservative estimate, you know, what I think is sane. Now, this does not take into account. This is this is taking into account that all the exchanges relisted. Now, mm -hmm. this is not taking into account the fact that the entire the entire enchilada of the crypto market is still under two trillion dollars compared to something like $150 trillion for the NYSE. I think it may be even more than that. Hmm. So right now, there are no real indexes for crypto being offered the way there is for the tech sector and the real estate sector and all that on the NYSE. Now, as hmm. soon as banks like JP Morgan and Chase and all, the, well, it's, you know, all of them start offering a crypto index, Okay, mm -hmm. when you've got something like, let's just say, $150 trillion in the standard stock market, and let's just say 5% of that money goes into the crypto, you know, indexes. Yeah. I mean, you're talking, you're talking about the entire thing is worth two less than two trillion right now. It goes from two to ten trillion dollars. That means that if it was all spread out somewhat evenly, you're talking about a five hundred percent increase in wow. capital or market capital for the crypto market. So that is gonna push Bitcoin. Bitcoin could end up four or five hundred thousand each. XRP could end up at 500 each. Now, again, first, the banks have to create these. And right now, the banks don't want to create crypto indexes because they don't want to get in trouble with Washington. Washington mm. hasn't created clear regulation on crypto. So right now, the banks don't want to touch it. So the banks are kind of stuck in a bad place because meanwhile, their clients, their investors are saying, when are you going to get a crypto fund so that I can just like the S&P, just invest evenly in like the top 20 cryptos? When are you going to do this? When are you going to provide this? And the banks are like, well, we're hoping to do that soon. Well, every day that passes, plenty of investors are saying, you know, screw it. Okay, Chase, whatever. I'm just going to go ahead and go on eToro or whatever or Uphold. I'll just buy it myself. So they're they're they want regulation. They want it because they want to offer this to their clients. So I see well, a huge transition of money happening in the future. Well, you know, speaking of money, there's a finite amount of money in the world that people have to invest, whether it's stock market, real estate, or whatever. And going back, say 10, 10 plus years ago, whatever it was, there was no cryptocurrency, did not exist. Now it does. Mm -hmm. And so that's sucking in all this money from other investors like you and me. And so mm -hmm. is there, is it possible that cryptocurrency could become so popular that it could be detrimental to the stock market and other investments like gold and real estate? And like people would yeah. not put their money there. They're going to put it crypto instead. Yeah. And that's, that's really astute um, because there's plenty of markets. Most people just think, Oh, there's a stock market. No, no. There's the NYSE and NASDAQ stock market. That's one asset class. There's real estate, which many people do, buy a house, flip it, rent it out, whatever. There's real estate. There's precious metals, the gold, silver, palladium, you know, that whole thing. Mm -hmm. There's crypto. There's bonds. Uh, there's uh, futures. I mean, there's all these different places to put your money. And what every the question that every investor has to ask themselves if they have any brains 
before they invest in something, they have to ask themselves. And and the guys that run the huge index funds, you know, like BlackRock and all this, and and Elon Musk yeah. and all the guys working for him, they answer this question. The question is, out of all of these markets available, where's the best place to park my money? Now everybody knows it's not cash. I mean, I'll I'll give well, anybody whoever hasn't figured this out yet. If you haven't figured out that having your money in a savings account is a bad idea, you really better find out what time it is because that money just sitting in a savings account is melting like an iceberg in the sun. It is it is losing value by the day. You've well, some of these banks are having money. negative interest rates, like they're actually charging you to, to take your money and loan it yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah, it's insane. I mean, mm. Chase Bank only offers 0.01%, and that's on a Sapphire high-end account. Why? In, mm. it, it, I told this story before, you know, but when I went to Chase Bank and I, and I got the Sapphire account, uh, he, th they sent out this guy, and he's, he's showing me his whole paperwork. He's, he's the investment broker, and yeah. he's wanting me yeah. to, you know, so he's showing me, he goes, oh, look here, you know, uh, we offer 0.01% on savings and we, we, our last quarter, we earned 6%. I had to restrain myself from laughing. And I was like, you know, because this was around March, April, I'm looking at this guy and I'm thinking on my own, I've earned 28% in one quarter. Wow. And you're going to impress me with 6%. Give me a break, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, I remember back. I remember back in the '90s. I don't exactly when it was, but you could go to the grocery store and buy a CD for like that was paying eight percent. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. those days are gone. Mm. Yeah. So, mm. so that question, where do I put my money? Getting back to your thought about there's only so many places to put money. Um, it will. I mean, because again, investors maybe a fraction of them, five, 10% will buy a stock because they truly believe in the company. You know, they really like Coca-Cola or they really like Apple products and they like investing yeah. in it. But 90% of people invest in their money in a stock because they want to make more money. Right. That's all it is. So, so why would they stay in say the, the NYSE uh, where maybe the stock that they bought is is getting maybe six eight percent per quarter uh when they could go and they're looking at the bitcoin chart and they're like geez louise if i would have bought bitcoin five years ago i'd be up by like 400 percent you know mm. so they're going to move that money they're going to answer that question my money is better off parked in crypto again if you do it wisely yeah rather than sitting there waiting for earnings reports I mean, look at look at the earnings reports that just came out this week. Facebook took a dump. I know a lot of people were yeah. pretty happy about that. <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah. Amazon did great. Amazon did fantastic. Well, you know, I remember when Amazon first came out, they were losing money for years and years. And I thought, who's going to invest in this stock? I mean, it's losing money. How can they even stay in business just selling books? And look where they are today. You know, they're huge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, Back when Apple, and remember no, when Steve Jobs, when Steve jo or uh, Bill Gates saved Apple? You know, they were about to go out of business and he invested a bunch of money yeah. and saved them. That's when I bought oh, Apple. Wow. I think it was like $18 a share. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. I didn't follow much of the Apple IBM thing uh, or the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, that part so much. I was more going into like, you know, routers and network systems and that kind of, I even mm. bought some hotels back then. Well, invested in hotels. Yeah. Of course, now investing in hotels the last two years would have been a really bad idea. <laughs> yeah, 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 really bad. Yeah, really bad. Well, anyway, really great. We've gone over an hour here, you know, I know you're a busy man, but uh, don't, don't uh, ring off when we finish here so we can talk privately. But everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks for your comments. And make sure you check out Rike's channel, which is Rike Life Beyond the Sea. Um, if you're thinking about moving to the Philippines, guys, I cannot recommend a channel that's got more information that is still relevant today than Rike's channel. It's the reason I ended up in the Philippines. It's the reason I ended up at Dulce Vida, the first apartment that I lived in, because I saw a video on your channel. And all those videos are still there. If you want to know about dating in the Philippines, living in the Philippines, finding an apartment, 
where to live. It's all on Enrique's channel. So there's so much great information there and I highly recommend it. So, and I'll be putting a link to that in the description below. So again, thanks for watching. Appreciate the super stickers and I'll see you next time. Bye guys. See you guys.